Hello and welcome back. This is Greg French. Uh, today we're going to start the overview, uh, part one of hardware 1.0. This is uh, going to be the first uh, lesson uh, of the CompTIA A Plus uh, computer training course. And welcome. Hardware 1.0, the objectives. There's going to be a few things that we're going to be trying to learn or understand. Uh, the first is we need to understand the computer needs both the hardware and the software to perform any tasks or work. Uh, one can't do anything without the other. The hardware will just sit there. The software actually drives the hardware and allows it to perform and process information. We need to also understand there are many different hardware components and these components are internal. Uh, such as the CPU, the memory, video, they're all internal to the computer, internal to the case. External to the computer are other, uh, are other things, uh, such as the mouse, the keyboard, the monitor, and data is uh, transferred through an input-output device to these devices, and we'll discuss this more too. Hardware. Now, hardware is anything physical, anything that you can touch or handle. These are physical components of the computer. Again, CPU, memory, video card, uh, mouse, keyboard. Uh, software are instructions. And these are instructions that are used to run the hardware so the hardware can perform tasks such as data processing. Uh, Windows, Linux, DOS, applications, programs, any other files that we might run on the computer are the software instructions that allow the computer to to perform tasks. Now all data processing, uh, hardware and software operate, operations are based on binary values. So this information or processes that are running through the computer is in, is in the form of zeros and ones. We call this the binary numbering system and it's a base two system meaning there are only two digits, a zero or a one. Uh, we have bits, which is either a zero or a one, or we might have a byte. A byte would be eight of these bits. And these are important terms to understand because we're going to be using these a lot. Because this is the binary numbering system. Again, the only thing that runs through the computer are ones and zeros. It's pretty amazing that just ones and zeros allow us to do all the amazing things that we do. But it's because the computer runs so fast and processes so many of these ones and zeros that we're able to do the things that we can do. Now here's an example. Uh, we have a worker, a lady, and uh, she's trying to connect to a printer over here, maybe in her office, or even it could be coming through a cloud. This, this could be the local network cloud in her organization, or it could even be the internet. Uh, but she's going to be processing information from her computer and trying to output to a printer. Now again, ones and zeros are the information that travel across the cables or wires that connect devices either within an office or within the entire world through the internet. All data flow, communications, storage, and processing are in a binary form. Again, it's just ones and zeros. Input-output. Input-output is something that uh, we hear a lot of. This, these are the devices that are external to the computer. Now, input-output have ports, and these ports are where we plug in devices that are external to the computer. Again, a couple of devices might be the keyboard and the mouse. And again, we have plugs that plug into the back of the computer to connect to these output devices. Uh, data processing, file and data storage devices are all internal to the computer. So all the data processing is going on inside the computer case. Uh, I.O. ports, again, ports are connections. And these connections can be cabled to the back of the computer or even maybe to the front of the computer, or we could have wireless input-output. A lot of times uh, things are now wireless, laptops are wireless. Uh, primary input devices are the keyboard and mouse. Because we're inputting information, we do that primarily through our keyboard or through the mouse by selecting things on the desktop. Now the output devices are the monitor and printer. Again, those are the primary devices. Uh, here's an example of a computer. We've got the keyboard here in front and the mouse usually on the right hand side. These are the two primary input devices where we input data into the computer. Now our output devices, the two primary output devices are the computer monitor where we'll see information and the printer where we can actually print hard copies. Now here's the inside of the computer case. We've got lots of power cables that are connecting power both to the motherboard to the hard drive or CD-ROM. 
Uh, also, we might have power going to fans that would be inside the computer case to, for cooling. Up in the top here is the power supply where these power cables are coming from. We have a fan both on the back of the computer and a fan on top of the CPU for cooling. Also on top of that CPU, and you can't really see it in this, is a heat sink. And the heat sink draws heat away from that CPU. And then the fan helps to blow it out. And then we have an exhaust fan that helps blow it out of the computer. We have a video card here. The video card is connected to either an AGP slot or, or a uh, PCI slot. Down here we have, um, you, if you can see it, the motherboard is this large board that everything sits on top of. These down here would be PCI slots. These slots could be used for extending uh, other functions for the computer, such as uh, a network card or maybe an audio card could be plugged in here. Data cables. This is a big flat 40-pin uh, uh, parallel cable. Today we're using primarily the serial, which is much, much smaller. And we'll talk more about that. This kind of just gives you an overview of what's inside the computer. Each one of these devices and things we're going to get familiar with as we go through this course. Uh, in review, hardware needs software to work. This is going to be a real important uh, concept for us to have to understand. We can't get this computer to do anything without a set of instructions. And those instructions are in the form of software. Computers use the binary numbering system. Again, it's just ones and zeros that allow us to do everything that computers can do. And we do this uh, extremely fast. Processors are doing billions of, of processes per second. So we have a huge, huge number of ones and zeros that run through this computer. All processing and storage is case internal. Everything goes on as far as the processing and storage inside of the computer. Now we do have I.O. I.O. ports and these would be external to the case. And these would be connections uh, normally in the back of the computer. But we could also have wireless uh, connections through the, through the air. Ports can be cabled or wireless. Got a couple of labs I'm going to ask you to do. I got labs 1.1. This is the binary numbering system. We need to get familiar uh, with at least 8-bit binary numbers. Not too difficult, but it's something that we're going to have to work on. And this lab will help you to kind of master that. Lab 1.2 are going to gather and record the system information on the computer. Uh, what would be the system information? It might be what kind of a CPU is running in this computer. How much RAM do we have? Uh, what's the operating system? This information I'm going to ask you to record on Lab 1.2. Uh, these labs can be found uh, on the uh, network server. Uh, so all you have to do is go there and you'll find it. Uh, evaluation. We're going to also ask you to do quiz uh, 1.1. Uh, this quiz is going to be multiple choice. And these questions will be similar questions that you would find on your A plus or your CompTIA A plus certification test. So answer the questions uh, at the end of the quiz. You can go ahead and uh, ask it to go ahead and correct or evaluate, and you'll see the answers. Again, you can find this on the server. That's it for now. Thank you very much for your time.